Hello, everyone. I'm James Brown. Alongside of my NFL Today crew, they will be Dan, Coach Shannon, and Boomer as we welcome you to the NFL Today CBSSports.com postgame show. Thoughts on today's early game? You know, guys, we always talk about momentum in the NFL, and there are two teams that I worry about going into the AFC playoffs, and that's the Texans and the Ravens. The Ravens lost four of their last five. The Texans have lost three out of their last four, and the performance today against Indianapolis is really troublesome because, you know, Matt Schaub had to go on the road and he had to show that he could win a game in a tough environment. And that offense for the last three weeks has basically disappeared. Uh, I don't, I, they could be one and done. It looks like that they're probably going to play the Cincinnati Bengals. And if that's the case, the Bengals have enough on defense and enough on offense to go in there and upset the Texans. And, you know, you talk about Matt Schaub real quick. In, in going into the playoffs so far, he's had 138 attempts, only one touchdown pass. So, you know, the last part of and the season. And this is a passing right league. Yes, it's a passing league. So that's got to be concerned. But a team that I like, you said, going into the playoffs is the Indianapolis Colts. And what they did today, they, they made a statement playing at home. They're a young team. And once again, Andrew Luck played a solid football game. He didn't turn the ball over for a young quarterback at home. That was a, a great job. And I look at the Atlanta Falcons, and we've talked about this, this team the entire year. And until they get into the playoffs and do something, we still, we're going to remain skeptical. And the only problem that I have with them, I have two problems. Their ability to run the football. They ran the ball today. 65 yards. Their inability to stop, stop the run. They gave up 144. And he and uh, Mike Smith played his starters the entire game. If you play your starters the entire game in a meaningless, meaningless game when you can't improve your standing, coach, you need to win that ball game because now you did some damage to your team's psyche because they lost to a Tampa team with nothing to prove. You had everything to prove, I mean, nothing to prove and everything to lose, and they lost today. You know, and as I sat there and watched games today, I know there's a lot of playoff implications, but I watched Andy Reid and sideline, and I just had to go back and reflect, and I got to say this. I competed against Andy Reid a lot in 2000. He came to the Philadelphia Eagles in 1999, and, you know, he came to the 90s were not good times for Philadelphia. What Andy Reid did was brought a level of expectation that probably led to his demise because he had to make some moves to try to get over the hump. He got to the championship game so many times, but getting to know him through the, the years that we competed against each other and was with each other, I've never met a classier guy. I thought he was a, he's a very good football coach. He's a better person. He's gone through a lot of personal things right now, and I will say this to him. If indeed this was his last game to the Philadelphia Eagles, he's left them a better place than when he got there. He's given them a, a degree of respect. He's brought a level of expectation that wasn't there when he got there, and it's all because of him. He handled himself with class, humility, and, uh, and professionalism every step of the way, and I have a lot of respect mm -hmm. for Andy Reid. You will be coaching again somewhere because you're a damn good football coach. And if you think about it, Coach, in the early 2000s, four straight NFC championships. He went to 5-0 ball. All that seems like a distant memory now. When you look at this football team boom the last two years, and you're like, what happened to the Eagles? They have way more talent now than they ever had in the early 2000s, You know coach. when it went on, when Jimmy, they lost the late Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson, Johnson. Yes. they really were yeah. never able to replace him with a coordinator that gave them stability because he brought stability to the offense. He turned the defense over to a guy. And unfortunately, like I said before, and when he made the move, which he thought was the right thing, to take a wonk of steel, From he the lessened offense. the offensive line and then hurt the defense in doing so. He tried to do the right thing and try and promote within, but this one maybe kind of backfired on him. But I'll tell you what, he has nothing to have his head held down for. He can walk out of his held, head held high. No one worked harder at his craft than Andy Reid did. And you know how hard it is to win in this league and to win on a consistent basis. You know, we all played there. You coached in it. And this guy was consistent winner for so many years. And uh, it's, it was tough to watch this year. His own You're success here, coach. led to his demise, coach. When you have that level of success early in your career, that's the level of expectation that the fans and ownership always expect you to do. And it's hard to can win year in and year out. It's hard to do it. I don't care what anybody says. Become a victim of your own success. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what I know that the sporting public can be a very unforgiving one, but, coach, I'm glad that you commended Andy on the way that he handled a number of things and never once did you hear him seek any kind of... Um, uh, uh, sympathy, if you will, or empathy from the public yes, at all. He just continued to do his job in a very professional fashion. Hey, folks, thanks for joining us on the NFL Today, CBSSports.com postgame show.